Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for our next hot topic. And this talks about the minimum wage. Now, following several hours of meetings on Friday, the federal government and the organized private sector have increased their offer for the new minimum wage to 62,000 naira from the earlier 60,000 naira. However, the organized labor is proposing 250,000 naira, which is a shift from its earlier 494,000 naira. Now, joining us to discuss this is Law Mefor. He's a forensic and social psychologist. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Thank you for hosting me. Thank you. So, yeah. I know we've had conversations about this, you know, in... Yeah in past weeks which is talking about the minimum wage and one of the things you said before was where is that money going to come from and that 494 thousand naira was a lot um for the government to be able to pay each worker as the minimum wage now labor has come down to about 250 which is you know kind of like a fair amount but the federal government you know is sticking in fact they had said we're going to do over 60,000 naira. We didn't know what that meant. And some people said it could be 61,000 naira, it could be 60,500, but right now we're seeing 62,000 naira. What do you think about this new figure from the federal government and the dilly dallying of all the meetings that they've had with, you know, labor, organized private sector, the federal government, all of them together? Um, you see, I am a lecturer. Yeah. And uh, one of the courses I teach is uh, industrial relations. Mm. And um, I am very familiar with uh, the concept of um, what you call uh, collective uh, bargaining, mm. which, exa which is exactly what is going on now between uh, the organized uh, labor mm. and um, the federal government. Uh, I, I don't think we are asking the right questions. Mm. There is still a bigger problem. You know, um, labor is, um, they started there from um, a 600 and something, came down to uh, 490 Four. something. Yeah. Uh, and now um, they have uh, come down to 250. Mm. And they're very likely to come further down. The mm. question is, you know, the, what informed all this, these figures have been read out. Mm. That is why I said that we're not asking the right questions. The party to the collective bargaining process, the labor and the, the federal government, uh, they have not actually um, come across to Nigerians as people who are proposing uh, figures that are backed by research and the statistics. You know, um, there is what you call living wage. Living wage is um, what um, uh, would they take any work at home, keep him and his family happy, and at the end of the day, you have uh, one or two naira you can put aside as savings. That is what we call living wage. We are not even talking about living wage here. We are talking about we are talking about uh, minimum wage. Now. Let me uh, put one thing in perspective here for you to understand the danger in this kind of um, bargaining that is going on. You know, what, when you say minimum wage, minimum wage here um, would uh, mean that any employer of labor, including the private sector, the local governments and the states, will not pay be, below that uh, figure. That's the problem here. Now, the question is, how did you know what should be the fair wage? Because it, from all indications, the federal government will not be able to pay living wage, will not be able to pay even a minimum wage. But we should focus on what you call the fair wage. Fair wage. Fair wage here yeah, means you know the money that um, is paid will then be reasonable enough to uh, enable the worker respond to uh, the economic challenges, transportation, feeding, um, housing, health, and all that, minimally, not maximally here. Now, you know, the, it, that will be fair wage, fair wage. Fair wage will also have to take into account the issue of um, 
hyper um, and spiraling inflation. There is a kind of money you, the federal government cannot even be advised to pay, even if uh, the government has that kind of money, because of the level of inflation it will induce. Once that is done, the money that is paid will be wiped off by the inflation, and the economy will be worse off. Mm. Now, having said this, how do you arrive at a fair wage? You arrive at a fair wage not uh, from the um, worker perspective alone. You need to also look at the numbers. The numbers here, that's why I said that I don't see enough statistics, I don't see enough research in uh, the figures being bandied by both uh, the labor and uh, the federal government. We need to know how many workers do we have in uh, the uh, public uh, sector. Public sector here means uh, federal government, states, and local governments. And of course, they, they organize the private sector ought to also be carried along. It is only last uh, few days that we saw the government uh, uh, tripartite uh, team mm -hmm. um, in they organized the, organized the, uh, the private uh, sector that now adopted the 62,000 uh, era um, recommended or prescribed by the federal government. Mm -hmm. And the governors rejected it outrightly, saying that they would not be able to pay. Yeah. You know, this shows you that the parties, the parties, the critical stakeholders in uh, this whole uh, issue of uh, minimum wage or fair wage are not carried along. Even uh, they have a proper team in place, they organize the private sector must be there, the governors must be there, local government chairman will have to be there, and of course, the NLC, TUC, and the federal government. And they must come to the table with figures. How much do we earn at the moment? How much can we devote out of the total receipts of the country to payment of salaries? Or is the government of Nigeria from a federal to local government going to be paying only salaries to workers? You know, these are issues. How much should, you know, what is the percentage that should be devoted to uh, to salary. What you know? What what do the other countries do? How much? What is the percentage other countries devote? Because if the average uh, devotion to salary in other countries is, for example, twenty percent, and Nigerian uh, labor organized and uh, organized is asking for uh, 70, 80 percent, you can see that this out of tune with what obtains in other economies. Now, you can see where my worries are coming from. Yeah. That the government, the government and the NLC TUC, they, they, they have been wasting their time all this while, as far as I am concerned. And then, that was why President Tinubu asked the Minister of Finance to come with the um, figures. He needed to see figures. What should be realistic? What can the government pay? That was the first time the, the, the proper uh, question was uh, asked. It was asked by the president. And that was how we now saw uh, that uh, over $5 trillion will have to be devoted to payment of uh, fuel uh, subsidies. Even though you and I have uh, been arguing, is a uh, fuel subsidy removed? Is it not removed? Mm -hmm. We are seeing those commitments of government. Now, the present uh, um, annual uh, budget is seventy uh, is a, is a um, twenty seven point something a trillion. How much of this should be going to the payment of uh, federal workers? How much is it the entirety? Is it the entire budget? Because the other day I was telling you that I did a bit of uh, math using some hypothetical figures, and I was shocked that if, for example, we work with a figure of five hundred naira minimum uh, wage, mm. that uh, the number of going by that figure, if you multiply by uh, the number of federal uh, uh, workers at the moment, that uh, even uh, the 27 uh, trillion may not be enough to pay their, to pay the salaries. So mm. these are the kind of things. Because if government yeah, um, is open, transparent, bringing the figures to the table, say, look, this is what we earn, and if you want us to 
if you want us to pay uh, 250000 as minimum wage, and this is what we earn, and we cannot pay beyond this and still do anything else without even borrowing, how do we go about it? It should be an open process based on figures. Figures don't lie. But we don't have such kind of a haggling going on. They are not showing us figures. I have expected that by now, the Labour should be able to confront Nigerians and say, look, this is what the states end on the average. This is what the federal government ends on the average, the local government. And we are not asking more than 10%, 20% of this figure. Nigerians will see the figures with them. We can do the math also along with them. Yeah. And then the federal government will be responding, showing that, look, labor is, uh, is lying or labor is uh, telling the truth. That is how collective bargaining is engaged. Like I told you that, I teach it. I've taught it for a decade mm. in a tertiary institution. You know, the International Institute of Journalism, I have taught industrial relations. And you can even see the basic logic behind it. I get what now, you mean. I, I get what you mean. And I, I know, like, in your opening statement, you talked about the basis for the, um, the figure. Like, what is Labour looking at for them to even say this is the amount that we need, especially starting from um, 615 to 494 now 250 and like you rightly said they may be able to still come down because that 250,000 are just might not be you know realistic enough but i remember that when you know they they came up with the 615 housing there was for 110,000 no transportation was for 110 10,000 housing was for about 40,000 naira. Now we know that you cannot really get a good accommodation for 40,000 naira. Well, let me speak for Lagos State, it's difficult for you to find an accommodation for about 40,000 naira. And so there are so many other things. I think electricity was for 20,000 naira a month. So now I'm even wondering what has changed for them to be able to come down to this figure. But this question I want to ask, I think it is vital. I know that we're throwing numbers around and saying this is the amount we can pay, this is the amount we want, we cannot afford this. But why is the government not looking at the fundamental issue? Because I know that even if the minimum wage was 500 naira and people's needs were met, that would still be fine. The reason why we're looking at such a high number, as some people would say, is because we know that the cost of living has increased tremendously. So why is the government not looking at measures, policies in place to ensure that people have good health care? Because that takes a chunk of your money. Good transportation system, because you have to commute to and fro, um, going to work and coming back from work. Food supply, food is really expensive. So why is the government not looking at all of these things to ensure that people can live comfortably and then whatever the minimum wage is will still be fine? Yeah, that, that, that's why I said uh, in uh, one of uh, uh, our uh, encounters here yeah. that uh, the label was uh, watching and the horse bolted. Mm. You know, when federal government removed the fuel subsidy and floated the Naira. That was when the problem began. Labor ought not to have allowed that without certain conditions being met. And these are the conditions you just read up. Yeah. For example, there is, no, there is no open transportation in place. There is no um, uh, longer buses that uh, are CNG compliant. Even if you get those buses, you don't have stations in Nigeria to convert to um, the CNG so that uh, we can use a uh, compressed uh, gas. And then, uh, you know, these are things that ought to be in place, first and foremost, before the removal of waste subsidy. Mm. But presentable uh, uh, at uh, Eagle Square simply waved in the air and said the uh, waste subsidy is removed. You know, even without entering uh, his office, had entered the office of the president. Mm. But, you know, and he just announced it at the Eagle Square. And Labour allowed it. If Labour called out Nigeria then, say, look, yes, we agree in principle that fuel subsidy will go, but we want this and this and this on ground before we can do anything, before we can go with uh, the fuel subsidy removal. 
because everything revolves around the fuel in Nigeria. Because even if you don't have a car, you still have to commute. You need to move from point A to point B yes. uh, using a car, a car, buses, and the cars, and so on and so forth. And it, it means that it, it involves everybody, everything about Nigeria. And there is no urban transportation. Even in Abuja here, no urban transportation. And uh, you have a bit of it in Lagos, but to what extent is uh, that taking care of uh, the, 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 the Lagos uh, uh, over 20 million population? You know, so it was labor that allowed this to happen, to happen to us. So they need to, they need to understand that they should take part of the responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, federal government cannot pay. That's just the truth. So what's the way forward now? What do you think is the way forward? And what do you think the new minimum wage should be? Do you think 62,000 Naira is okay? Or do you think the federal government needs to come up a bit more and labor needs to really cut down their expectations? Federal, federal government must come up. Mm. You know, 62,000 is it, not likely to work, mm. right? But yeah. again, you know, maybe we should just settle for what the Obaseki did. Go for seventy thousand. Exactly, Naira. because I'm wondering why Edo states can offer seventy thousand naira, but other states, a states as you know, as thriving as Lagos economically, is saying they cannot afford it. You know, the uh, Sangolo is playing along with other governors. Mm. He wouldn't want to uh, bring uh, the economy of Lagos to be the determining factor because they have thirty five other states to worry about. Yeah, you know so. I think I understand the, the team play by Sam Wolo and it's quite uh, commendable. But you see, like I told you, any amount you approve today, mm. the organized the private sector will have to pay that. It means that the driver in your office there will have to receive a minimum of that 250000 mm. You know, that, let's, let's try to understand this. We'll have to, I'm talking about your office now, your driver. Yeah have to receive a minimum of that amount. So if, uh, if labor is still supposed to and federal government uh, goes uh, for that, you can be sure of the number of uh, jobs that will be lost. Because yeah. there's no way organized the private sector will go with uh, an amount they can't deal with. Yeah. As we speak now, we, uh, uh, we have a 30,000 naira minimum wage that just expired. Mm -hmm. How many people, uh, do you know that up to seven states are not paying I'm not paying that 30,000. Yeah. And you're not calling for 250,000. How many states would be able to come along? Well, let's just. That is where. Yeah. Let's just hope so, that labor right. cuts their expectations and maybe the federal government tries to, it, to come up yeah, a bit. Yes. Government, federal government needs to come up a bit. And mm -hmm. I think uh, we, may, we may just have to settle um, for the Edo uh, standard. Go for that 70,000. Mm. It's going to be tough even for a number of states and they organize the private sector. Mm. But anything less than 70,000 naira, I don't think will work. All right. And don't forget, don't forget that the states will have to struggle. Mm. It means that uh, there's a figure you, you go for, it's only the federal workers that will enjoy it. Mm. You know, and, uh, and the rest of us, the organized private sector, the, the states, the local government, we have to owe arrears of salaries, even mm. now, uh, salaries are paid in areas as we speak well you know, so. I, th I think let's just hope that you know whatever it is they come to a realistic figure for everyone so putting all stakeholders um into play and saying you know, this is what everyone can easily afford um i know that it's going to uh, be tough but i think we should just really uh, look uh, at that let me, let me quickly okay we have to go now we have to go yeah, now okay but just the last word okay on no account should the federal government accept to pay more than 100,000 naira? Mm. It's going to be a big problem even for the federal government. Mm. Yes. All right. Hopefully, um, like I said, they do what's right. Whatever figure they finally agree on, um, I hope that it's okay for everyone, um, all, of the, all of the stakeholders you know, in play as well. Dr. Law, we want to say thank you. It's always a pleasure having a conversation with you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you for hosting me. Thank you. Have a blessed day, Nigerians. You too, sir.
We've been speaking with Law Mefor, he's a forensic and social psychologist, and we've just been trying to make sense of what the federal government has proposed, which is 62,000 naira as the new minimum wage, although Labour is asking for 250,000 naira. This is always a developing story, so we'll keep bringing what the new figures would be. So hopefully after their meetings, we'll let you know what more is in store. All right, this is where we have to draw the curtain on the show. It's lovely having a breakfast with you every day as always. My name is Rome Paulson. I'll see you again tomorrow. Have an amazing day.